Welcome everyone to today's session. Do your healthcare students struggle when working with individuals with mental illness, intellectual disability, or PTSD? Well, we would like to highlight a brand new resource that we have available to teach these important skills. This innovative new program will help equip your students with strategies for working with patients with these conditions. So here's a look at what we're going to be covering in our session today. We'll begin with a little bit of information about caring for individuals with intellectual disabilities, mental illness, or PTSD, and how our program can help prepare your health science students. Uh, you'll receive a thorough introduction to every part of the program. You'll learn how to use the program to help your health science uh, course or pathway program um, uh, address these issues. Then we will actually share several different sample scenarios that you'll be able to try in your own programs. And then we're gonna end up with a Q&A session at the end today. So the goal of our health science CT programs, of course, are to prepare those future workforce uh, members to fill the skills gap that exists. Now, it's, it is much easier to prepare your students to care for what we call average patients, although however you might wanna define average, but sometimes caring for individuals with those special conditions such as mental illness, intellectual disabilities, or even conditions like PTSD are not dealt with in classrooms as much. Now we're hearing that there is a real need for classroom resources that explicitly teach students strategies for communicating and caring for these types of individuals. So here are a few statistics to consider. So um, we hear that nearly one in five US adults um, do live with a mental illness. Approximately 6.5 million people in the US do have an intellectual disability and about seven out of eight out of every hundred people will have PTSD at some point in their lives. So just um, to show statistics like this means that health science students at some point in their health careers most likely will have to um, work with patients that have uh, some type of condition such as these. Now, providing care to special populations is a concern worldwide. So here are a few comments from the World Health Organization about the preparation of nurses for providing care to individuals having mental health disorders specifically. So I th thought these were, were really good points by the World Health Organization. So in most countries, nurses are the largest group of professionals providing mental health care in both primary and specialist health services. And that probably holds true here as well. Now, many countries, the education of nurses is inadequate in that area and appropriately trained nurses can really contribute to the promotion of mental health and prevention of treatment of mental disorders. So again, just some, some good uh, words from our World Health Organization. Now, nursing organizations in the United States are aware of and doing their part to address the need for skills and training with these special populations as well. As recently as uh, 2019, the American Nurse Association revised their position statement on the role in providing care to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So it states, the nurse's primary commitment is to the patient, whether an individual, family, group, community, or population. So this, this uh, position statement paper ends with a list of 13 recommended activities or actions that should be implemented to continue to improve care for IDD patients. So how can we help? Well, we can help by giving students explicit instruction and strategies for caring for individuals with a variety of special conditions, including intellectual disabilities and mental illness. So the program that we're gonna be sharing with you today provides real world scenarios and problem solving uh, opportunities for your students to work through. And we're gonna help them uh, in the lesson plans clearly define what these different conditions are so that healthcare workers understand and know how to approach in a best practice way. So here's our brand new program, Soft Skills for Caring for Patients with Intellectual Disabilities, Mental Illness, or PTSD. Now, failure of healthcare providers to communicate effectively and appropriately with people with these uh, disorders is a major barrier in the delivery of quality healthcare for people with these disabilities. Research evidence indicates that there are some strong positive relationships between a healthcare team member's communication skills and a patient's capability to follow through with medical recommendations. Studies show that the clinician's ability to explain, to listen, and to empathize can have a profound effect on biological and functional health outcomes, as well as patient satisfaction and experience of care. So this interactive program was developed to prepare future healthcare professionals 
to care for patients with ID, MI, or PTSD disorders by using effective soft skill strategies. So here are the components included in our program. First of all, you get a curriculum. We're gonna take a look at each of those individual five lessons in the curriculum. Then you receive four sets of scenario cards that are used for role playing. And there's a total of 40 different cards in each set. You'll receive a set of 20 student workbooks. There's also a dimension auditory hallucin hallucination simulation set. And we've included four of them. They uh, come with MP3 players and headphones that simulate both of those conditions. Uh, there's a storage case that everything fits into for convenience and of course a quick start guide that will uh, help you learn how to use the program. So let's take a look at each of these pieces individually. <clears throat> First of all, the curriculum. Now there are five lessons in the curriculum and here are the titles of each of the five lessons. These lessons integrate the use of the scenario cards, the workbooks, and the simulation experiences into them. Now, each lesson takes approximately 60 to 90 minutes to complete if you do everything in them. So the first two lessons in the curriculum are what we're calling foundational knowledge. And these include a brief pre and post test to see what students know and to measure what they learn. Now, each lesson will come with a PowerPoint, a, a very uh, comprehensive PowerPoint and lecture notes, which goes into great detail about each type of condition it defines it and it discusses what types of things fall into each category. It identifies signs, symptoms, and a whole lot more. These lessons also include a wealth of information about how things are defined, classified, and diagnosed. So we share some best practices, information on what to look for in each of in these patients is shared, and then the best ways to communicate and reach out is also shared in the lessons. Next, we have what we're calling our three strategy lessons. And these lessons specifically focus on giving your students strategies for caring for individuals with intellectual disabilities, mental illness, and PTSD. So soft skills like communication are vital for successful interaction between your patients and healthcare providers. And that's what is covered in these three lessons. So. Here's a typical layout for this part of the program. We start with short introduction, introductory scenarios that will engage your students right away. It might be a good practice, bad practice. It might be scenarios, uh, brief scenarios where you're asked, is this helpful or hurtful? And it gets your students engaged immediately and captures their interest. Then you can go into a very brief pre and post self-assessment. These are types of questions about uh, for students to think explicitly about what do they know coming into the lesson on these types of conditions and um, working with individuals with these conditions. Um, you also have a pre and post uh, knowledge quiz to again, have students think, think about not only um, what they know about working with patients, but what is their, their knowledge base about these types of conditions as well. Then you get into the meat of, of the actual lesson where you're, you're given uh, PowerPoints uh, extensive lecture notes, and then um, handouts for students as you uh, do the lecture in the PowerPoint that students will answer and go through. So you get all that background knowledge out to them. And then you have the role play. And this is where you're going to be using those scenario cards and those simulation tools to actually role play what it's like to be a patient in those conditions, and also what it's like to be a healthcare provider working with those individuals. And then at the very end of it, you will have debrief questions that you'll answer in the student workbook. So that's kind of how the flow of a lesson will go. Now here's a sample scenario card and it in all the things that includes. First of all, there's uh, the card category and there's four categories. Um, there are 10 different scenarios. There are intellectual disability. There are 10 specifically with dementia or Alzheimer's disease. There are 10 with mental illnesses. And then there are also 10 for uh, PTSD. Um, each of the roles in the scenario will be defined that need to be um, assigned. When you do the role play, you'll actually have the scenario that the students will read through so they understand what they're going to be doing. Um, the opposite side of the card has symptoms of the condition, so students become aware of, of what to look for. Um, then there are always uh, several different suggested approaches to take, so students will actually do the role play um, 
more than once so that they can try the different approaches and, and see how those work out. And then at the end, you will also have the expected outcome of that scenario so students know what they're working toward um, as they role play that scenario. It's just not open-ended and goes on forever, but there's a real uh, focus to the scenario. Um, within each of those four categories of, of scenario cards, there are a variety of conditions in the scenarios as well. For example, for intellectual disabilities, we include a variety of ages and, and types of intellectual disabilities. Uh, for mental illnesses, we have scenarios with things like uh, OCD, anxiety, bipolar disorders, a psychosis, and so forth. Now here's a sample workbook page. And in the workbook, there is a page that has each of those 40 scenarios in the scenario card deck. And this is also where you will find the specific pre-brief and debrief questions that students answer. So each student would have their own workbook. And we found that it's a great take home or keepsake or a great resource after they've completed the program for reference in the future because you have um, 40 different scenarios that they have worked through, they've uh, role played, they've problem solved through, and if they find themselves in a future work situation with a similar type of scenario, this is a great guide for them to reference. Um, next, we've got the dementia and auditory hallucination simulation. Now, the program includes four of these, and they include um, MP3 players with those sound files loaded on and headphones so that, the, so that multiple small groups or pairs of students can role play simultaneously. Now, again, there are the two audio files on it. One plays a confusing kind of unintelligible type of soundtrack for confusion in dementia or the Alzheimer's scenarios but it also includes an auditory hallucination sound file. And these will be used during that role play part of the lesson and the scenarios that include these types of conditions in them. So students will wear the headphones and they'll listen to the soundtrack while role playing is happening to create that sense of realism. So here's just the short flavor for the auditory hallucination uh, audio soundtrack. Here you you don't so take scared. your medication. No, nope. it changes so you. What? You want to be rich? You'll Why do you keep that watch? So that's just a very brief clip of, of what will be on that sound file. Hear you. You don't so take scared. your medication. No, nope. stay away from it. Okay. You're trying to turn that up. You want to be rich? You'll Why keep that watching this. You have your you know, into a horrible person. You're um, having a little bit of technical difficulty here. All right, let's see if we can advance. Nope. Try to advance to the next slide. Nothing. 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 Away, away. Now, don't see a medical professional. <laughs> there we go. Next, next slide. So here's how the role play works. First of all, you're going to identify the scenario that you wish to use out of the out of the scenario card deck. And again, there are ten scenarios uh, featuring intellectual disability, and then ten focusing on dementia, Alzheimer's, and PTSD. So you'd have your students read through the appropriate scenario in the student workbook and answer those pre-brief questions. Then you'd assign student pairs of small groups, pairs or small groups, depending on the number of roles that need to be assigned in that scenario. So you'll assign the roles and then you'll give each pair of small group that scenario card. Each group will read over the card so that they review the roles, the scenarios, the symptoms, of the approaches that they're going to try and the suggested outcome that they're working toward. And then you'll go ahead and you'll give them five minutes to role play the scenario using one of the suggested approaches leading to that outcome. Then you'll give students five minutes to switch roles and then role play the others, play the scenario using the other suggested approach. And then you'll have your students answer those debrief questions in the student workbook. Now, as one option, you could call the class back together and you could do a large group debrief um, after students have answered the questions too. So there's, it's very flexible and there's a lot of different ways that you could, you could actually use it in your classroom. So here's uh, more information about how to use it. Um, we, we think that the whole program is, is very flexible. It's a supplemental program 
for use in any type of health science pathway program. Now, depending on how much time you have, um, this could be a total of five to 10 hours of content. So here's how we suggest that you approach it. You could teach those, those two overview lessons and then you could teach the strategy lesson. I'm sorry, teach the overview lesson on the topic, then teach the strategy lesson. Then you would complete that role play or those scenarios. And again, you have 10 to choose from. So you can choose how you wish to, or how deep you wish to go into those and lay those out. And then you'd complete the pre-brief and debrief exercises. So you could complete one scenario for each class period with each group completing the same one. Or if you wished, you could assign each pair of small group a different scenario for each type of condition. So with 10 of them available, you've got a lot of different flexibility in ways that you could, you could deploy those. So this is appropriate for use in a variety of different health science pathway programs. And here are just a few. Now remember, any students who work in health careers will inevitably end up working with a patient that perhaps um, has mental illness or intellectual disabilities. So the program is meant to help give them some tools to use when that time comes. So here are just a few of the benefits for students. First of all, um, you're integrating the use of a, and teaching of a lot of soft skills in this program. Not only communication, but empathy. You're gonna have problem solving, uh, working in teams. So teamwork, team building, critical thinking, and a whole lot more. So it's a great, easy way to integrate uh, teaching soft skills. And if your students go through all 40, or maybe not even all 40 of the scenarios, when they um, get to those situations in real life, they should feel much more confident and better prepared to work with individuals that have intellectual disabilities, mental illness, or PTSD. Um, again, this is a supplemental resource. So if you're already using other textbooks, online resources and things, this fits in very easily um, to anything that you might already be doing. And we also know that the benefits of scenario-based learning makes lessons what we call sticky. It means your students are gonna remember this. Um, you're not just lecturing and, and, and uh, talking about it, but when they actually have to be the individual with that condition, they'll feel very vulnerable and they'll feel great empathy and, and better understanding for just what that um, individual might be going through um, when they're in a healthcare situation. Now here are a few other additional benefits of scenario-based learning that we'd like to share. Of course, they've got that sticky learning that stays with them, but it also facilitates problem solving in learners. It will put your students in those new and different uh, situations that they wouldn't otherwise have a chance to think through. It provides guided exploration to learners, mean, meaning it will give your students those explicit, thoughtful, critical thinking opportunities, and they're done for you, so it'll save you time as well. It provides a safe practice zone to gain proficiency and mastery. So your students don't have to have a fear or risk of consequences. They're in a safe learning space to try things out. Um, it allows learners to make mistakes through feedback and it helps you to reinforce that right approach because now is the time um, for uh, students to practice. So they'll know what to do when they come across situations in real life. We want to help them build their toolkits of responses and approaches. So now I'm gonna share three sample scenarios that you can use in your program. Uh, you could um, role play or just use these as good discussions or writing exercises if you'd like. So we're gonna share one today on intellectual disabilities, one dementia and one mental illness scenario. Now, if you find yourself in a remote learning environment, you could create a video or audio recording where you're reading the scenario and the information surrounding it and then you could post it. You could have your students working at home with their workbooks to do those pre-brief and debrief questions. So there are a few ways that you could adapt this. Of course, this works best and it's meant for in-person learning, but we know right now uh, we're trying to be flexible as we can with, um, with COVID. So that would just be one way where you could use this. So let's take a look at our, our scenario here. This is again with uh, intellectual disability. So you've got a young man with Down syndrome and you've got the caregiver who supports him at work. So you would uh, need a pair of students to do the, this a role play. And um, Tyler works at a local grocery store several days per week. Juan, who is Tyler's in-home caregiver, has been going with him to work for years. He is there for oversight and hands-on assistance as needed when Tyler is working. Now, Tyler recently began opening snacks at work and eating them. Now, this has never been an issue for the last several years that Tyler was working at that store. 
but Tyler's boss is threatened to cut, off, cut his work hours if he continues to eat snacks at the store. So Juan wants to work with Tyler at home about this issue, but isn't sure where to start. So you would uh, talk about a little bit more about Down syndrome. And then some of those suggested approaches that Juan could use. And so you would um, read through one and read through two that are on the card. And then you'd also share that expected outcome. And then you'd go ahead and you'd role play with your students or have them do it. Here's ours, uh, one of our sample scenarios for dementia. And in this specific one, you've got again, uh, uh, two different roles. You've got Charles, that middle-aged uh, uh, stage of Alzheimer's, and then you've got the caregiver named Jackson and they're working uh, in a facility setting. So again, you've got the scenario. Uh, students have it both in their workbook and you also have it on the card. Uh, you'll be um, reading through that. You'll be uh, talking and discussing about some of the symptoms of the condition so that they understand during the role play um, some of the behaviors and things that they should be working in as uh, the role of Charles. Um, you've got some suggested approaches to try so that during that role play, your students can be uh, choosing which approach that they want to role play and they're working toward, again, that expected outcome of that scenario. So this is another one you could try in your program or again, if you are remote, uh, you could, you could uh, have your students do those pre-brief and debrief questions um, remotely at home. You could have some of the, you could um, post an audio file of the scenario, or you could even do a discussion um, if you're not able to role play. And then this is our sample scenario today for mental illness. And in this one, you've got uh, two different roles. You've got a young woman named Catherine who's got bi bipolar disorder, and you have the caregiver Rhonda. Now, Catherine's a 45-year-old woman who has bipolar disorder. She lives independently and is very stable when she takes her medications. She's visiting her doctor's office for her quarterly meeting when she notifies Rhonda, the caregiver checking her in, that she hasn't been stable on her medications for a few weeks now. She states that she doesn't think she needs them anymore. Rhonda knows that Catherine has a history of going on and off of her medications, and she's worried that this could lead to a manic episode for Catherine. Rhonda wants to effectively communicate to Catherine a reminder that she historically seems to be the most stable when she's on her medications. So those are just a, a brief sampling of the 40 different scenarios that you'll find in the program. And please feel free to go ahead and use these in your programs to give it a try and, and see how it goes. So here are the SKUs and pricing and these will be on our website um, shortly for, for people who are interested in ordering them. So we just wanted to let you know that the whole the whole program is the first SKU. You can also order what we're calling that Dimension Auditory Hallucination Class Pack. That's another set of the four simulators. So if you want to have more than four small groups doing it at, at once, you could have eight if you purchase another class pack. And we have more workbooks available as you, as you need those for individual students. And then we also have those scenario card decks available with the 40 cards so that if you wish to augment the, the um, the amount that you get with the program that you can add more to your program. Now, in addition to that program, if you're looking for more soft skill resources, we have something called pathway or occupation specific workplace scenario cards, and they cover real world scenarios and a variety of health careers. Now these cards develop soft skills. There are 19 different soft skills in here um, within different occupational areas. And these can be used for small group discussions, uh, large group icebreakers, or even as individual challenges. Um, you can purchase these as individual pathway uh, card decks or even as a class pack of 10. And we have them in the five different pathway areas. We have nursing, uh, geriatric, which are great for CNA programs. We have a new sports medicine deck, a medical assistant and EMT. All of the scenarios in the card decks were written by subject matter experts in the field. So they should be re very realistic scenarios that you're into in these five different occupational areas. So you could use the program again to supplement your existing employability skills or soft skills instruction. Um, you could actually even use them to teach a complete unit on the skills. Uh, you can generate real life discussions with them. Um, on the back of them, they've got some key questions and those are really helpful for doing reflection activities um, and generating just really short icebreaker activities on 19 different soft skills. 
So at this point, I'd like to give you the opportunity to ask any questions you might have about the program that we, we talked about today.